What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Sooners Fanatic and today we are going to be talking about the Alabama 2020 season. So if you are not subscribed, go ahead and do so. If you have not already liked the video, go ahead and do so. If you haven't commented anything, wait till the end and then go ahead and do so. Let's get into it. So first we're going to be talking about the schedule. Um, they actually have a pretty good schedule, a lot of interesting games on here. Um, some for personal like purposes, others for another type of reason. So just a couple notes um, before we get into the schedule. Usually we go straight into the schedule, but I thought this was interesting. Alabama missed the playoffs for the first time this past season, right? And here are the expert predictions for the 2020 season on them. CBS Sports has them going as 9-3. and College Football News has them going 11-1 and one or 8-4. and four. <laughs> Sports Illustrated has them at 11-1 and one or 10-2. And, and then 247 just did the SEC. And I think they had them at 7-1. and one. I didn't write theirs down. So people aren't expecting much. They're at least expecting one loss um, to be expected, to be honest, because they do have a tough schedule. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into that. So they start off the season with South Southern California coming to them, USC, I think they're going to be very improved. Um, they're actually getting some decent recruits. There's a lot of rumors going around on who they might get as well. A tantrum of defensive linemen might be coming to Pasadena. Um, then they play Georgia State. I thought that was interesting because that's the school that my sister goes to. Then they got Georgia, and that's a big game. That's one of the bigger games to start, you know, at the beginning of the schedule. And we talked a lot about that in the Georgia um, video. So if you... Haven't watched that video and want to know more about that. I'm not going to go into detail as much on this one, but that is a huge game for both parties. Next, you got Kent State. So, you know, they're a little by the SEC buys. Um, you got at Mississippi after that, at Arkansas after that. Uh, then you got Mississippi State. I think that's going to be interesting, like way more interesting than the past games. Maybe not that season that they had Dak, but... Michael Leach versus Nick Saban. I'm so here for that. Oh, my gosh. Um, you got at Tennessee, and then a bye after that. Then you got at Louisiana State. And that's going to be, you know, good and fun to watch because uh, Louisiana State handed everybody on their schedule a whooping except for mm, Texas and maybe Auburn. So, you know, just like seeing how teams play Louisiana State next week, or next season is going to be very interesting. I'm, you know, I'm prepared to see Louisiana State take some L's. Like, to be honest with y'all, I'm sorry about it. That's why I didn't put them in the top 10, because I think people are going to be playing them with, like, all their guts. Um, And, you know, they did lose a lot of players, and that's why they didn't make the list. After LSU, you got Tennessee Martin, uh, Texas A&M, and then you wrap up the se season with Auburn. So Auburn's going to be very interesting. Texas A&M could be interesting, um, depending on how Texas A&M plays. They usually don't live up to the hype, but maybe this year they do. Um, but I really like that Auburn game. Bo Nix, see if he can still bring it in year two. Um, they did lose quite a good bit of production on that defensive side as well. So how do they replace those players? Um, Alabama could like do a revenge tour and just whoop everyone though. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, so with them, I'm very, you know, optimistic, but also I, I still have my doubts. They are getting a new quarterback. We don't really know who that is going to be. You know, they did get a five-star quarterback this past, you know, off season. So of course he could play, but it's all going to like, no matter who you pick, it's going to be a new quarterback playing against SEC defenses. Tua's brother just left. Tua's gone, you know. Um, and then, you know, Alabama does come with some pressure. It's one of those blue chip schools. They haven't won a championship in the past, you know, two seasons, and that's a big deal to them apparently. Um, they didn't even they didn't make the playoffs last season. That's a big deal to them. Um, so you know, it's just gonna be very interesting to see what happens with this team. Um, they do have some guys coming off injury. The the linebacking core they have, if they get healthy, like full health, should be phenomenal. You got Dylan Moses. You know, I, I'm I'm thinking he could win the Butt Kiss Award. Um, him and Josh McKellen, you know, they got to return strong, be the anchors for that defense. You got um, Alex Leatherwood, which, you know, I didn't really know too much about their offensive line, but he is a stud. You know, I did some research on him. He's going to have to give that quarterback some time playing left tackle. Um, that new quarterback to just read that defense because it's gonna you know it, it's SEC country so they got some good DCs over there so you know what they know what they're doing. <laughs> um, Devontae Smith is gonna have to you know make up for rugs and 
Judy. It should be pretty good with Smith and Waddle on the perimeter. You know, a bunch of speed on the edge is what you need on offense. Big 12, you know, I'm, I mostly watch Big 12 football, so I know what I'm talking about here when it comes to speed on the edge. <laughs> and then Najee has to get going and stay hot whole season. Like, if Najee or if they do maybe a couple different backs, but no, they have to get going running the football to help out that new quarterback in that system. They're not going to be able to throw it 50 times a game. You know, they're going to need Najee to get going. So that's the other takeaway from that. Alabama, I have them at number five. Outside looking in, um, possible losses to Georgia. And they're going to have to lose somewhere else for them to be at that number five spot. Because if they just lose Georgia and still win the SEC championship, they're going to make it, right? We've seen that happen before. I don't think it's coming at the expense of LSU. Um, I think they're going to play Auburn pretty well. I think... <laughs> This is gonna be a hot take right here, boys. Tennessee or Texas a and So those are my two possible, you know, cause look, look at where Tennessee's at, right? Right before LSU, not only that, but right before a bye. And Tennessee's been hot, right? Not only in the recruiting trail, but they haven't lost since last like, I think they haven't lost since they played Alabama. Like, that's how far back it goes. They got a win streak towards the end of their um, season last year, and they can carry that over. They play some good teams. Tennessee can be sneaky, um, sneak out a couple wins this year. And then, like I said, Texas A&M, um, just right before Auburn, you know, they played Tennessee Martin the, the week before, so they're not really – they could just be going through the motions. But I'm sure Nick Saban's going to bring it. I could see this team also just winning a natty. Like, they could – just make the playoffs and, and win everyone because they feel so disrespected. Um, nobody's talking about them, and they expect to be talked about. So look out for Alabama. Um, should be an interesting 2020 season if we have one, and I'm hoping we do. Um, if you like the video, like I said, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe. Let me know who I should do next, and you guys have a great day.